Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Ken Noor on the line. He's CEO and president over at that company. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Adam, it's great to be here. All right, Ken, so we're good. we got a great topic today. So we're going to get into Rank Brain and uh, what businesses need to know out there. But before we do that, I do want to know a little bit more about that company and how you're helping your clients. But even before we get into that, Ken, i got to know, how did you come up with that company? And I, and I believe you're known as that guy. Tell me more about that story. I am. Do you want to know about that company and how we became that company? It's funny. It's an SEO story. Um, and back in the day, SEO was uh, – uh, it, there were things called uh, white words, and that is a white word, meaning that it, it was ignored uh, by Google. And at the time, uh, we were operating SEOcompany.com and PPCmanagement.com, and we merged with a smaller company, Absorb a Smaller Company, that was in advertising and PR. And so we decided to look for a, a domain that we could uh, – uh, rank really well in those days for advertising agency. And so uh, we found that advertising agency and thought that's really neat because they'll, ex- they'll ign- ignore the word that. And so we could go after just advertising agency as a keyword. And then we realized at the time uh, our, our primary corporate name, our parent company is uh, Build Intelligence Web Solutions and nobody liked it. And when we were merging with this firm, they were a, a PR and traditional ad agency. And they said, you got to rebrand. And so we were able to find that company, and that's where the beginning of that company came from. And then we took the top rankings for advertising agency, and uh, the rest is history. Um, although we we pivoted quite a bit, and that's not who we are anymore. Um, today is something totally different. Oh, I knew you wouldn't disappoint. This is an SEO story. You know, I, I, right. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me, and I had to, I had to, I had to uh, document that for my audience because I looked at it. I'm like, man, you've been in business at least with that company for going on 14 years um, with that company alone. I'm like, yep. no, there's a story. There's a story behind this because interesting things were happening online 14 years ago. You're a, you're an early you're a pioneer in this stuff, so um, that's awesome. And I think that's also a great transition. So. Let's get into that company and the complexion of what you're doing today. Tell me a little bit more about the company. Yeah, so like I said at the very beginning there, uh, we're, we also are SEOcompany.com. And for eight or nine years running, uh, we were the number one ranked firm for the phrase SEO company. Uh, and in 2015 or so, um, Google did a massive shakeup to the SEO community. Um, I, I knew and still do know all of the guys that were ranking number one in those days, all really valuable uh, and, and incredibly talented SEO firms. Uh, long and short of it is, is that Google decided to uh, completely disrupt that space. Uh, within an overnight, all the guys that were top ranking were gone. Um, and within three weeks, Google turned the phrase SEO company into a local search, which meant mm. that uh, instead of getting the best SEO company in uh, in the uh, uh, globe or in the mm-hmm. country uh, as the number one result, you actually got the SEO company that was closest by to you um, or had a had a relevance related to proximity. Um, and at that point, we realized, you know, if we're uh, what we ought to do um, is pivot. Well, when we originally started way back 
Uh, we were, you know, our our flagship product at the very beginning was pay per click management. Uh, mm. And in 2008, we had a big SEO firm out of New York City contact us and say, "Hey, we do SEO, but we don't do pay per click. Would you do pay per click for us for our clients?" And so we got into our first white label relationship where we would mm. do. Uh, work for them, and it was very custom. So we actually talked to their clients as they're under their company brand. Uh, we sent out reports under their brand. We uh, answered phones as their brand, uh, and we had built that relationship over a long period of time. And when that happened in 2015, we thought, you know, we do this white label thing pretty well. Um, and if SEO is going to get uh, the phrases uh, related to SEO are going to be turned into pizza, and what I mean by that is when you search pizza. You don't want the best national pizza place. You want the pizza place that's closest to you. So they're going to turn SEO into pizza. Maybe we ought to become the pizza oven for all of the SEO companies out there. All of these guys that were now suddenly catching rankings in their locality, but really maybe didn't have the skill set to pull it off. And that was kind of our entry into white label. So today, that company is a white label internet marketing company. We provide services to other agencies. Um, uh, exclusively, um, uh, approximately 400 agencies across the United States, Canada, Europe, um, English speaking mostly. Uh, and, uh, that's, we offer a core level of services, search engine optimization, pay-per-click management, uh, social media management, um, uh, email campaign management, reputation management, uh, generally kind of those, those things for agencies. So when people call us direct, uh, I mean, we don't go out and hunt that business. We will work direct, but most of the time, uh, the majority of the business we do is working with our agencies. So, I guess, Man, that so we're so... really that company and that company and that company and that company and that company. Wow, that's that's so exciting. It's so smart. I love it um, because it makes sense. Like, especially like when I look at like our agency, I'm like, all right, so we do a lot of things. We don't do SEO. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to have to get you on the phone with our with our other co-founder. He deals with all the, the partnership side of things. I'm on the mic. I already told you that, Ken, but I got the guy for you to talk to. I need to figure out, do we need to be doing this? And if you're out there with an agency, by the way, um, like you need to be thinking about this too because, I mean, if it's a if you work with a very reputable company, I love, I love, and again, I've never worked yeah. or done the SEO side. And of we have those relationships, end, but, Adam. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're right on it though. You, we have relationships, Adam, where we we're the infill. So, like I said, we our first foray into this was a big SEO firm that said, "Can you do paperclip?" Mm-hmm. And so we don't. If if you're if you have an agency or you're in marketing and. Let's say you're a web design agency um, and you need us to fill it all and we could do that. If you're you're doing social media but you don't do SEO mm-hmm. and you don't do pay-per-click, we could do that. And we operate under your brand. And mm-hmm. I think what the thing that sets us apart, we have two what I call USPs, unique selling propositions. The thing that sets us apart is um, the, the two things. Is one, we private label or white label our sales too. So meaning – if you have a, a client opportunity, you may not be comfortable setting the proper expectations for what a client could expect from SEO or what they could expect from PPC. And we all know how important expectations are to customer satisfaction. Um, the number one failure uh, uh, for an unhappy customer is a missed expectation. So we can be on the phone as your brand actually helping you close uh, the business with your clients uh, and you've got a professional sales team available that's not normal in the white label space. The other thing that's not normal is that we actually do direct client communications. Like I said, we answer the phone as as your brand. We uh, respond, uh, you know, under your brand and all of our communications uh, with the client through a privatized project management system, uh, and that all falls out underneath your email domain and everything else. We stay invisible, but it stops that thing from your typical kind of like outsource overseas where you're going to have somebody do the SEO, but you've got to be the middleman. You're the one that has to talk to the customer. You have to get the customer's interests and needs, and then you've got to go talk to the, your SEO team, and then your SEO team has questions, and you they got to call you, and then you're going to call the customer. We take all that telephone game thing out, and we interact directly with the customer. Um, all of our, all of our on-the-front-line people are – uh, native English, U.S. based people. Um, in fact, we outsource very, very little, um, at all 
And so everything is, is U.S. based. So we just give a really strong representation of your brand when we're working with your customer. That's awesome. Let's uh, let's get into Rank Brain a little bit um, with the time we have left here, because I do yeah. want to go a little bit further into this. So, um, and and I will be having so Shirag Shirag is going to be giving you guys a call for us. That's his name, the other co-founder. I'm going to do an email right, introduction deal. after this, and and I'm going to also give you the the uh, opportunity to leave your website and stuff, so that the other agency owners that are out there listening, yeah. like myself, can also follow up. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit more about Rank Brain and what business owners out there need to know. Okay, so Rank Brain, in its very, very simplest form, um, you're familiar with crowdsourcing, aren't you, Adam? Where we go mm-hmm. out and we crowdsource, they raise money, and we get a lot of mm-hmm. people together, put a dollar in, and soon you have a million dollars worth of investment. Yep. Familiar with that? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, so Rank Brain, in essence, is crowdsourcing search engine optimization results. It's Google observing behavior the search results behavior. So and it's very simplest form. When when a result is pushed up into Google, uh Google watches the behavior of its searchers and whether or not they and how they interact with that. Um and then they also compare that interaction with what the web page actually looks at. So just to give you an example, um there are three types of searches or search intent. Um, the first is an informational search, the second is a transactional search, and the third is a navigational search. Informational search, you're familiar with it. We do, we're doing research online. We, we do search for a keyword, and we respond and click on Wikipedia, or we click on this informational website. A transactional web ser- search is where a phrase uh, results in somebody that, when they, their behavior indicates that they're looking for purchases or they're looking for uh, uh, an e-commerce website. And then the, the final is what we call navigational, and navigational actually kind of falls into two pieces, and that is uh, where they're trying to find where they're going. That's a simple navigation. And the second is when they're looking for a, a very specific brand or they're looking for a known name or something like that, trying to navigate to the, a company that they're aware of. Um, but the important part to understand about this at Rank Brain is that your website has to match that intent. So if you look at that intent and what we see when uh, Google comes through and they watch the users, over a long period of time, they've collected a lot of information. So two great searches to get an example on this. We could go out and search uh, Air Jordan's size 10. Air Jordan size 10 is a search that's obviously transactional. It's, it's The person is indicating that they're looking for Air Jordans and they're looking for a very specific size. And if you were to study the results on that search result, you would find that all of them are grid-based results, meaning what I mean by that is they, they have a typical e-commerce layout. When you click on the result, you come there. There's not a lot of content. There's grids of photos of various different Air Jordans and their sizes and colors and all that. And then if you were to look at the, another search, say the history of Air Jordans, you did a search for the history of Air Jordans, you look at those results, results are totally different completely different. It's a different style page. And that's because Google has figured out what that search intent is and what people are looking for and their behaviors. And they're watching that behavior all the time. So that is the core basis of understanding rank plane and understand searcher behavior and matches it up with the type of content that it's, uh, that you're trying to rank. Okay. So if I were trying to rank an e-commerce website, For an informational search, I would struggle immensely Mm -hmm. if I was trying to rank an informational site for an e-commerce keyword or a search or a transaction intent keyword, I'm I'm dead in the water. You've got to understand what that means, and that's really the core basis of rank rank. Wow, it makes so much sense. And so when you think about, um, like, the changes, and as people are out there with their strategies and what they're doing with their client, because sometimes in SEO, I mean, it's difficult because it changes, too. Like, the stuff doesn't stay the same. Like, you gave us an example of early of early on, right? But every single year, it could be more than that. But I'm always hearing about these changes. So to me, it's like if, you're not, if somebody's not having these type of conversations with their agency or with, you know, their, their SEO expert, like, the, it's really tricky. Like, so my background is finance. So when I was in finance, yeah, we were doing every single year there's something new, new regulations, new things, new tests like that. You got to stay up to date. Like this is SEO is a craft. Like whether it's rank brain or whether some of the other things yeah. that that um that happen, like 
Google sends out an announcement and a whole like it, like and everything changes and you're like you don't we, we nobody controls the yeah, Google. I'm gonna throw in the the right, but uh, that that's what we're all beholden right. to as, as the number one. <laughs> but but when you understand these concepts, they could be used to your advantage. So let's go. I want to take you could you could use the e-commerce example if you like, or you could use another example if you want. But let's take that scenario a little bit further and what a strategy could look like. Uh, absolutely. So the, the, right out of the gate, um, understanding that, because uh, when we talk about that, there's a little bit more to it, but and I'll dive over. I'm going to actually go a little further with that. But the thing that I think is most important to understand is that if you do not, if, well, you mentioned it, if your agency's not talking to you about search intent and, and an understanding of that, then they're applying a one-size-fits-all kind of approach. It isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. It used to be, but it is not anymore. Um, you must, you must, you must, you must understand what's going on with search intent uh, because it's exclusionary. So if I have an informational result and I'm trying to go after my my web page is informational and I'm trying to go after a transactional keyword, I am dead in the water. I cannot do it with that. Google will not rank me. It just won't work no matter what I do, no matter how many backlinks I build, no matter how good my content is. If it doesn't mm-hmm. match that intent, we're done. So you've got to know what your search intent is for your keywords. You have to actually go look at the search results. You have to actually look at the pages that come up and what is Google favoring in that intent base. Um, so I think that's an important tip for your listeners to pay attention to is does their agency understand search intent? Because if you don't, we're done no matter how hard you work. So we can write great content. like, And that's usually – now, understand that 90% of search is informational. So your mm-hmm. typical content, long-form, well-written content, uh, authoritative, is probably going to work nine times out of ten until you're trying to rank the transactional, and then we have problems. But the other thing to understand that, that how Rank Brain functions is they also watch user behavior. User behavior on your website is incredibly important, and the number one piece of user behavior that you need to look at is bounce rate. And we understand what bounce rate is, or maybe everybody understands what bounce rate is, but a bounce is when somebody visits your website, they come and they land on a page, and they immediately leave the page. They, they don't go to anywhere else on the website. So imagine for a moment what Google, what signal we're sending to Google. Uh, Google has moved you up into the results set, and let's say you're in position number three. And the guy above you in position number two, the visitor, the searcher does the search for whatever term it is. They click on number two. And they immediately bounce out. And then they click on number three, which is you. And they disappear. They never come back to the search result again. They go into the website and they go deeper into the website. What signal do you think that's sending to Google about the difference between your website and the site above you? It's sending the signal that your content was valuable and so it must be more important than the one above you. So but it bounce rate, flip it, your bounce rate was worse and the guy below you had a, a you know a better or a lower bounce rate than you, that his site's more important, more interesting, more valuable, and Google is crowdsourcing users to determine your ranking. So the quality of your content, the the, the engagement of your content, whether you can get what we call the next click. Getting them to visit the website is the first mission, but getting them to engage with the website is the next mission, and it's an important one. And SEO, classically, through the years, didn't care. We did not care. We got the visitor, yay for us. We took the ranking, we got the visitor, but that's not Mm -hmm. enough anymore in SEO. You're talking about, you mentioned the changes. On average, this COVID year is a little bit different, but on average, we track over 400 algorithmic shifts every year. But RankBrain is doing it on the fly. It is literally evaluating user behavior and manipulating search results based on what currently users are doing and how they're reacting to your content. So it's another important part. If your agency doesn't understand this, then, then you're not with the right agency. If your, if, your, if your SEO campaigns and efforts don't take this into account, you're missing a big piece of what SEO is all about and what the future of SEO is all about. Man, this is awesome, Ken. And you're getting me all fired up. When people start talking about things like bounce rate, I pull up, pull up, pull up, I pull up Google Analytics, and I'm like, oh, no, what's going on? Ah, this, uh, I'm like, ah, it's low, but my session duration is yeah. not as high as I want it to be either. It's like, ah. 
<laughs> Love pages it, per session is a this big number. What, pages per session, is, right? Now they go into somewhere oh, else, right? Man, this is the stuff that gets me all day long, and I'm like, oh, my head, my head. But it's exciting because when you make when you make the, when you make guys, the improvements, so SEO guys so would always talk to you about keyword density. Mm-hmm. Say again. No, go ahead. Keyword density. Go ahead. I was saying that SEO guys over the years would always talk to you about keyword density, title tags, meta descriptions. All this stuff, and those are still important, don't get me wrong, but they never talked to you about your analytics. They never Mm -hmm. took a deep look at it because it didn't matter, but it is mattering a lot, and it has mattered. If if your SEO campaigns have struggled, this has mattered since 2016. This is not something brand new. Mm -hmm. It's getting more, the algorithms of Google and understanding user behavior are getting more and more and more complex. Um, but you, you got to pay attention to it, and if you're not, it's not part of your SEO strategy, then you're missing it. It's not just about writing great content. It used to be just about a great content and acquiring backlinks. It's way, way beyond that these days. It's awesome, Ken. Well, I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time on this one. Um, what's the best way for if somebody's listening to an agency and they, they want to like follow up with you just like we're going to follow up? Um, what's the best way for them to connect with you and your team? Absolutely. So uh simplest way to connect with us is, is a brand you can't forget. It's that company. Um, we're not – it's funny. We're not this company, but actually our true parent company is this company. This company owns that company. And one day I'll open I can't, the company. I can't do it. You I can't. Want you, to, you just you made my head blow company. up. <laughs> I just made your head blow up. Um, yep. So, Thatcompany.com. Yeah. I'm going to answer the question for you, Ken. Thatcompany.com. <laughs> That's awesome. And, of course, Here's if you would dog. like to follow me on social – yeah. Uh, one, one last thing. If you want to follow me on social, I'm at Ken Knorr, K-E-N-K-N-O-R-R. I'd love to have you as a Twitter follower. Uh, catch me on LinkedIn either way. So. Fantastic. And let me see. What's that again one more time? Because I'm going to go to Twitter right now and give you a follow. Everybody else definitely do the same. So let's see. Beautiful. Get at, at. Do the old, do yeah, the old at. at like Ken, K-E-N. K-E-N. And then you start Knorr, typing K-N-O-R-R. K-N-O-R-R. There he is. I got him. All right, perfect. So definitely everybody go check out at Ken Knorr, um, as I just did. So, Ken, awesome having you on the show today. Seriously, provide a lot of value to me, and I'm sure my audience also got a lot of value out of this. So thank you again for that. And to everybody listening, if you are a first-time listener, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you come back. Love to have you hear some more episodes. Um, And if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, give that a subscribe. But also, more importantly, leave us some comments for the video. This is all about interaction and building the community. We definitely like to talk to you on the on the YouTube video and the comments. So definitely leave us some comments there. And Ken, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been it's been awesome. Adam, thanks for having me, man. You got a great energy and a great show, man. Uh you you gained a sub out of me for sure. <laughs>